Okay, so we want to look at a general amplifier. So if we go to this general amplifier page, you can kind of see that everything, every type of amplifier requires a dependent source. Now the dependent source can either be a current dependent current source. This is a current dependent voltage source, voltage controlled voltage source, or a voltage controlled current source. So we need some type of dependent source in order to make an amplifier. So a example of an amplifier that you've used before is here is an op amp. So with an op amp is basically a differential so you subtract these two voltages here and you get some Vn and then this Vn is amplified here. So, and those are pulling from these power supplies, which we're not really worried about at this point. So what we want to look at is, if I look at the Thevenin equivalent resistance scene looking between these two terminals, I get some input impedance Rn. And if I look at the Thevenin equivalent impedance scene looking in the output, I get the V out because this goes to zero because there's no input. So an amplifier has a gain an input impedance and an output impedance. And we can take any amplifier and set it up in that configuration. So typically when we're doing an amplifier, what we're going to do is we are going to draw our ideal amplifier like this. So this is my Rn, this is V1, this is my dependent voltage source. and this is my output impedance. So what we do is, is we look in the input side, find the Thevenin equivalent looking in here, and we get our in. We look at the Thevenin equivalent scene looking this direction, and we get the R out. And then what we're going to do is you're going to add on an input side and add on an output side and see what happens. So let's look at a simple example. So if this is my input usually has some uh, resistance, we'll usually call it the generator or the source. And then we're going to and then over here we have some load. Okay. And then what we want to do is we want to come in here and we want to add in our amplifier. So the amplifier from up above is going to have some R in. Some gain and some R out. So then if I want to look at my V out, we can see that I have a voltage divider here and a voltage divider here. And these voltage dividers is what's called the term loading. And here is my output loading. So let's look at what my full output is. So my V out is going to be equal to RL over RL plus R out times my gain times my V1, which is going to be R in over R in plus R, what did I call it, S. So my V out over my V in is going to be my output loading times my gain times my input loading. 
Okay, so in order to, to decrease my loading, you look here, we would like to have RL be much, much greater than R out, and we want R in to be much, much greater than R S. So we want a high R in and a low R out. Okay, now if we, let's say that we wanted to do two amplifiers. So if we do two amplifiers, we could just chain them together. So this is R in one. And this is amplifier one. And then we're going to connect this one to the next amplifier. So this is going to be R in two. And you see this is my second amplifier. And then we just connect that to my RL. So what you see is that the input of my second, second amplifier is going to have loading with the output of my first amplifier. So I have some loading here, some loading between the amplifiers, and some loading there. And then I can just cascade all of this out, and then this is my V out. And that's how we basically, and so we want to take any amplifier and characterize it by an R in, an open, unloaded gain, and an R out. So when we get into transistors, we want to put them in terms of this model.